Friday, March 15th. And there's something very interesting going on in the New York City public transit systems, the subways primarily. That reminded me of something that I did back in the late 1940s. So in the 1940s, and I was going to Hebrew school, and there was a collection container that sat in the candy store, and we all know it, it has a slot, and people drop coins into it. And in my recollection, it was said United Jewish. Appeal. But in any event, I got an idea that I wanted to help raise that money. And I was at that time studying for my bar mitzvah. So I was between 12 and 13 somehow. And in New York, and I, we rode the subway at all the time, and I always saw people on the subway begging. So I went to the guy in the candy store, because I wanted to raise some money for the United Jewish Appeal, I think it was. And I asked the guy if I could borrow that container and take it on the subway and uh, beg for money on the subway. And that's what I did. He gave me the container. I went down 183rd Street, got on the Lexington Avenue line. I rode from Lexington Avenue down to 42nd Street. I would walk through each car and ask people to give me money. And uh, most people didn't give me money, but everybody now, every now and then, I got some money, and maybe I made a buck or two bucks or three bucks, and I went down to 42nd Street, and I came back. And then, sometimes, I would go up to the Grand Concourse and get on the 8th Avenue line and do the same thing. I did this for about two or three weeks, right? While I, on the days that I didn't have to go to Cheder, right? So, in any event, that was what I did. And now, I'm reading in the New newspapers, an article about the migrant children. And they are doing something very similar to what I was doing, except they are selling candy. And the people doing this selling are between the ages of like 8 and 17 or something like that. They had pictures of these kids with little packets of candy strapped around in some carry case. And they were walking in the subway stations selling these candy bars. And people were upset. Part of the people who were in this article talking about it, they were upset because these kids were doing this during school hours. Now, I don't know if your family's in desperate needs, if going to school is more important than getting a few bucks to feed them. But in any event, this is what's going on in New York right now. And the major issue is that nobody in the New York City government or the state government is responsible for taking care of this situation. And that's what the main issue presented in this article was. Who's supposed to take care of this situation? It wasn't that people were objecting to the mere fact that these children were out raising money so that their families could survive, and they weren't objecting because they were migrant children. The the objections came about because nobody could put a finger on the New York City organization or the state organization organization that was responsible to monitor this situation to possibly stop it or improve it or do whatever it is that these people who were worried about it wanted them to do. And so I said to myself, that's strange because there should be somebody that's responsible for some activity that's going on. But maybe the New York City government is turning a blind eye to these situations because if they have to start doing something, it'll cost them money, of course. But on the other hand, they will be affecting the lives of these migrants who certainly could use the money that 
their children is, are mating by selling this candy. So it's a conundrum. Yes, many could argue that these children belong in school, that selling the candies is not helping their education. But then again, when you look at it, you see that your parents are in big trouble and your siblings are starving and everything, then going to school becomes much less important in your mind than hustling a few bucks out on the subway platforms or wherever they're selling this candy. So that is a major problem. If we stop this, are we going to make sure that those families have enough to eat? Are we going to provide other things to help these families survive? I don't think so. And I think that is one of the major reasons why there's nobody in city government really paying strict attention to this. Because no matter which way they turn, there will be people who are heavily set against whatever activity they take. If they stop the candy selling, they'll be looking at being bad guys because people are starving and they don't have enough money to eat. And then the other side of the coin will be those people who are saying these kids belong in school and if their family is starving a little bit, they got to figure out a way, but the kids need to be educated. So I don't have an answer. I don't have a good answer. And we know these kids need to go to school and the Department of Education has attendance teachers who work to ensure that their kids are sent to school, but they don't really do any checking on that. And the police department has issued some some 1,100 summonses for panhandling on the subways, but they don't do anything about it. Everybody realizes that these kids are in a desperate situation and nobody's willing to really take a chance and crack down on them because that would be heartless. And I agree with them. It would be hard. So they've got to figure out a way to help these people. And then the Labor Department said it's, it's difficult to determine whether the practice of children selling candy in the subway would violate any labor law, which generally regulates employment relationships. But these people don't have any employer. They're out there on their own. They're independent. And that's a good thing. Being independent is a very good thing. The State Office of Children and Family Services, which runs a hotline, said that a child selling merchandise or panhandling would not be considered maltreatment or neglect unless they could definitely determine that there was harm involved. So if the child is not selling candy at a dangerous intersection, leave him be, leave him or her be. Interestingly, many of these children are from Ecuador, and they were selling candy in Ecuador to survive. So the coming to the United States may have been giving them an opportunity of some kind, but they still have reverted to a standard of living that they maintained while they were in Ecuador. And their parents have simply said they haven't figured out how to get them into school yet. So that's something else that we have to deal with. But it seems like this is a universal problem, not necessarily confined 100% to the United States. But we certainly should figure out a way to accommodate all of these children in need. I don't see anything wrong with them hustling to make a few bucks. But why don't we make sure that they do it before or after school? So I'll leave you with that this morning. A community that is surviving by selling candy. Have a great day. Take care. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.